Just so glad to be up here. Uh, glad to be with the Sescos. I, 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 that's a family that I hold very dear to my heart. I love to hear them sing. Love to hear them, uh, Brother Derek, minister of the Word of God. And I'm so honored this morning uh, that I'm able to once again come up here and to bring to you the manna from on high. So if you have your Bibles with you today, I want you to turn with me to the first chapter of the book of Galatians. Uh, the first chapter of the book of Galatians, I'm going to give you something that God has given me and that's been upon my heart and mind. And uh, here recently, uh, especially in my church, the last message I preached to them a couple weeks ago, uh, we weren't able to have church, but I was able to do it by the, the Facebook live stream. And I preached a message on the art of deception. And my mind is still in that uh, on that topic today on deception. You know, deception is running wild in our world today in which we live. The truth is not highly advertised and it's not highly adored. I think a lot of people would rather be comforted with a lie than be rebuked with the truth. And, and, and we find that all over the world, but we find it more so in the church today, in the church in which we live. And Paul ran into that issue in Galatians chapter 1. And, and uh, we're going to read today chapter 1 verses 1 through uh, let's see, verses 1 through 12. So I'll give you a little bit of time to get there. Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. I want to talk about this morning getting the gospel right. That is the topic of my message this morning. Starting at verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me into the churches of Galatia, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, Lord, I come to you, dear God, and I thank you, Lord, for another day of life. And I thank you, Lord, for your many blessings, Lord, that you bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord, for once again coming to our bedside, dear, dear God, and just opening our eyes once again to another day of life. Uh, Lord, we ask that you be with us, Lord, at this time and hour that you'd give me the words to say and the thoughts to think upon, dear God. And I ask, Lord, that you would give me the anointing, Lord, from on high to preach this message, dear Lord. And I ask, dear God, that you would just be with everyone, Lord, during this time. Uh, I ask, Lord, that this message would be for the uh, edification, Lord, of the church, that it would be for the conviction of lost sinners, dear Lord, that they would come to know you before it's everlasting too late. I ask, Lord, that you forgive me of all my sin and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. And amen. I told you... Uh, before we got started, I wanted to talk about getting the gospel right. And in the year 2024 in which we live, um, I, do, I do believe that there are some churches that have it right. But I do believe there are some places that don't. And I don't come here this morning to say that you all don't. I believe Brother Derek teaches the full, perfect, true gospel. I've heard him preach and I can tell you myself, thumbs up to the man. He can do it. He can preach the truth. But there are some people in the world in which we live that don't. And they have took the gospel and they've twisted it. And they have made it to be what Paul called it, another gospel. And that's not him saying that there is more than one gospel or more than one way to be saved. But what he's saying is that there were people at that time, they were teaching something that was false, but they were bringing it under the guise that it was the true gospel. And what these men were, they were called the Judaizers. And they were Jewish men. And they came in no sooner than Paul had brought the gospel to the Galatian church and they established this church. He left. And no sooner than he left, here come these men and said, I believe your fellow Paul has it almost right. Yes, faith in Christ does equal salvation, but you must also do such and such. 
They added some works from the Old Testament law that man must do something else other than believe to be saved. In Acts chapter 15, verse 1, we find that Luke says that these men, Judaizers, come in and this is what they said. They said, except a man be circumcised according to the custom of Moses, he cannot be born again. But friends, listen to me. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible does not teach that man must work or do something or such and such to be saved or to keep your salvation. The Bible says that man must have faith in Christ to be saved. Faith alone in Christ. And like I said, I don't come up here today to, to think that you all have it wrong. I know you've got it right. But what we've uh, got to look at today is there's other people that don't. There's other people that don't. The Galatians had it right. But because the Judaizers had come in and they listened to the lie, they walked away from the truth and believed a lie. And there's a lot of people today in this world that are believing a lie. There's a lot of people today in our churches that are listening to a lie. They're listening to what's called the gospel, but uh, uh, man teaches, and I've heard many different things. I've heard men say that you must believe in Christ and be baptized in order to be saved. I've heard uh, people say that man must uh, believe on Christ and keep the Old Testament Ten Commandments to be saved. And friends, listen, that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Baptism. There's no way in this world no way in the Bible does it teach that man can be dunked in a body of water and come up a redeemed man. The Bible never taught that man could teach the Old Testament or keep, man could keep the Old Testament law. It was not meant to be kept. The Bible says it was a schoolmaster, Paul said, that was to show us that we couldn't keep it to begin with. Is that right? We couldn't keep it. James said, if you keep the whole law and break one little part of it, you've broke the whole law. You may keep nine of the Ten Commandments, and if you break one, you're guilty of shattering it all to pieces. You can't keep the law. You can't do enough. You can't uh, do enough to get it. You can't do enough to keep it. Salvation, let me make this plain and clear. Salvation is found in faith in Christ alone. And that is it. And I can show you in the Scriptures where it teaches that man is only required to believe and repent to be saved. Jesus said in Mark 1, He said, repent and believe the Gospel. That's what He said. And we go throughout the New Testament and we know that the Gospel is the Gospel that teaches salvation by faith. But before we hop into that, we're talking about getting the, the Gospel right. What is the Gospel anyway? We need to know what exactly it is. There's a lot of people that teach that the gospel is founded upon making man the star of the show. And that's not it. It's not about man. It is about Christ. The gospel is about Christ. Paul made it plain and simple. In 1 Corinthians 15, he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Paul made it plain and clear. The Gospel is not about Christ doing anything else other than dying for your sins. He said it here in Galatians 1. Who gave Himself for our sins? that He might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. The Gospel, first of all, is about Christ's death, burial, and resurrection and about the benefit that He brought to us through that. Now, I believe the Galatians knew what the Gospel was, but what they got hung upon was how did they receive the benefit of it? How can man be saved? And a lot of people are still hung up on that. How is man Say, we know what Christ has done. Now, how does Christ's gospel benefit? Me? How can we receive the benefit from that gospel? How do we receive the salvation that Christ produced on the cross? And that's where man gets hung up. And listen, this letter, I'm sure, was written 2,000 years ago, and that issue is still prevalent today. How is man saved through Christ? 
And as I told you before, the Judaizers came in and taught, Paul got it almost right. But he's forgetting one thing. He must keep such and such of the law. Man must do something. Man, for since the dawn of time, has always tried to do something in order to earn God's approval. He's always tried to do that. We find in the book of Genesis, I think it was in the latter part of chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, we find that after Adam and Eve had sinned and God called them out on it, what did they do? They sewed fig leaves together, didn't they? To hide their nakedness. To so they could be in God's approving sight. They tried to do it by their own work. Didn't work, did it? It got them cast out of the garden. We go a little bit later on in the book of Genesis. Uh, we find that man was uh, building the Tower of Babel. And I heard a commentator say one time that in the heart of man, as they were building that Tower of Babel, that was kind of their way of building their way to heaven. And it didn't work. Man has always tried to build himself and work himself into God's approval. But let me tell you something today. You can spend 60, 70, 80 years doing that, and you'll never make one ounce of progress. It is not by your works that get you God's approval and God's righteousness. It is by the works of Christ's life. And how do we receive that into our life? Well, we go back to the main topic, faith. In order to be saved, man must believe on Christ. What did the uh, Philippian jailer ask in Acts 16? The Bible says that the, uh, somebody once called it when the earthquake came and shook the jail. They said that was the very first mention of jailhouse rock. Uh, but when the, the, when the earthquake came into the jail and all the prisoners were set free, the prisoner almost took his life. And Paul said, don't do that. We're all here. And the jailer came up to him and said, the greatest question that can ever be asked. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? And maybe you're here today and maybe you've asked yourself that question this week. What do I need to do to be saved? What do I need to do to be spared from the wrath of God? And what did Paul say? Well, uh, you need to find your church somewhere to join. No, that's not what he said. You need to go find you a water hole somewhere. No, that's not what he said. Not what he said. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thine house. So not only will you be saved if you believe, but if you go home and tell your family, your family will believe. And if they tell their family, anybody that believes on Christ will be saved. Believe. On the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Uh, Jesus said in John 3 and 18, He that believeth on Him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's pretty clear, ain't it? He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. John 3 and 36, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. It's faith. It's by faith. And you know, that's not a new thing. That's not something that just came about in the New Testament. It's always been that way. Go back to the time when Abraham was on the earth. The Bible says in Galatians 3 and 6 that Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him righteous. Abraham believed in God. He trusted God. He trusted God's providence. And I know that he had to have trusted God for a promise of a future Messiah. And Abraham was declared righteous. And a lot of people might say, well, Abraham was circumcised, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. But you know, he was saved first, and years on down the road, he got circumcised. He wasn't circumcised and then got saved. He got circumcised because he was. And it's the same way with baptism, guys. We don't get baptized to get saved. We get baptized because we are, to show what Christ has done. We don't join a church to get saved. We join a church because... Christ has saved us and we want to be a part of His earthly church. It is not in what you do. Paul said in Galatians 2 and 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? A man is not justified by the works of the law. There is not one thing that you can do found in the Old Testament and you keep doing it, and you keep doing it, and you keep it, there is not one way that you can earn God's righteousness by doing that. But it is by faith in Jesus Christ. Christ done it for you. Christ done it for you. He lived on this earth 33 and a half years and lived the total sinless life, keeping every law, crossing every T, dotting every I, 
Not sinning the first time, though he was tempted, he never fell short in it. And he kept the entire law. He kept the entire law and was God's righteousness in man. And when you believe on Christ, that is when God's righteousness is imputed to you by faith. I love what Isaiah said in Isaiah 61, that He's clothed us in righteous garments. And you want to know why? We have Christ's righteous garments is because of what He's done and we have believed on Him. And some people may say, well, isn't faith a work? No, no. God gave you that faith. Paul said in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Man does not have anything in his own hands that attributes to him salvation. Everything that he has ever needed to have comes from God first. Repentance, that comes from God. Faith to believe on Christ, that comes from God. I'll tell you what Jonah said. Salvation is of the Lord. Totally of, of God. Whatever you need to be saved, he has supplied it in Christ. Do you understand that? Believe on Christ, and we receive salvation. Romans 10 and 9, Paul said, If thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in that heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And we all know John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, what, keepeth the law, finds a baptism home, gets dunked in it, Join the church? No. Whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe on him. And I'm going to tell you something, you all. A lot of people talk about, well, that's easy believism. I don't know if you've ever heard that term. Let me tell you something. A man will not truly believe alone. He will also repent. Faith and repentance you cannot separate. You cannot separate faith and repentance. Uh, somebody made it this way one time. Uh, faith and repentance are two sides of the conversion coin. If man truly believes, he will have truly repented. And if man truly repented, then he truly believed. You'll not have one without the other. So yes, faith and repentance are two of the same thing. It is a gospel uh, of salvation through faith. It is a gospel of salvation by grace. Grace. What is grace? Grace is when you're given something and you don't even deserve it one ounce. It was just given to you freely, not because of something you did, not because of something you said you would do. It was given to you freely without any merit reason at all. We are all saved not because we made a promise to God, well, God, I'll do better if you save me and God saved us. That's not why. And it's not because we were improved and God saved us. We were wretched sinners. There was no improvement. There was no promise to do better. We can't get better in our own works of righteousness. God saved us because of His grace and His mercy that is only found in Him. I'll tell you what Paul told Titus. He said, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Not because of what I did. I didn't do anything. I was just mean. I was a sinner. I didn't want God. None of us did. Isaiah said, there's none that seeketh after God. Paul said that. Isaiah said, there's uh, none righteous, no, not one. Paul said, there's none that doeth good. There's none that seek after God. You didn't come looking for God. God came looking for you. Just as God came looking for Adam in the garden and said, Adam, where art thou? It's the same way with you and I. God came looking for me. And he found me. And he brought me into the fold. And I'm one of his. And it is why. He wasn't obligated. He wasn't made to do it. It's because he done it out of love and grace. And if we take grace out of the gospel, you no longer have the gospel. If you take love and, and God's power and God's intervention out of the gospel and you make it about man and what man has done to earn God's righteousness, you have another gospel. We need to get the gospel right. We receive salvation by faith in Christ only by His grace. Paul made it clear in Ephesians 2 and 8. He said, For by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
you're saved today, not because you worked for it, not because you earned it, but because God looked upon you in grace and saved you out of love and saved you by His mercy. And you don't keep it today, not because you're good enough, not because of anything you do, but He keeps you according to His grace. It's all about God's grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. It's all about grace. I love what Paul told Timothy. He said, who had... 2 Timothy 1 and 9, he said, Who hath saved us, speaking of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It's God's grace. We're here today and we're saved and our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life because of God's grace. The McCamies used to sing a song. I know how I made it. I made it by God's grace. And that's the song that every one of us will sing when we get to heaven. How did we get there? Not because of what I did, not because I preached, not because I was a church member at Bud Baptist, but because of God's grace that was shown to me. That's what all of us can be able to say. It is the gospel of salvation through faith. It is the gospel of salvation by God's grace. But where do works come in? You know, there's works within the Christian life. There is. Let's not totally throw out works here for a minute. The Galatians were taught by the Judaizers that man was saved by his works. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that man is saved for good works. Where does works come in? Not to get saved, but after conversion. Paul said in Ephesians 2 and 10, he said, For we are His workmanship. We're saved for good works. We're saved to serve God. We don't serve God to get saved. We serve God because we're saved. Do you see that? Do you see why? Uh, Do you see where a lot of people can get in on the error there? A lot of people are so focused upon what they can do and upon what their works is for God. And they're so focused on that. Man has made himself the centerpiece of the gospel. That Christ saves you, but you've got to do No. Christ saves you by grace through faith. And that's it. The only thing that man does is the good works, and those are the works of God. God gives you those good works. God works in us. He performs those good works in us. Ain't that what he told? Ain't that what Paul, Paul told the Philippians in Philippians 1 and 6? Uh, What was that he said in Philippians 1 and 6? I used to be able to quote it all the time. But in Philippians 1 and 6, he said, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It is God that does the good works. God does it all. There is not one way, not one uh, platform that you and I can stand on and say, Look what I did. We can't do that. It was all done by God. Jonah, like I said, Jonah said it best. Salvation is of the Lord. All we are are unworthy, wretched recipients. That's it. We didn't do anything. The only thing that we did was the sin that caused Christ to die. That's the only thing you can take credit for. There's an old song that somebody used to sing that said, If you look in the mirror, you'll find the man that crucified the Lord. If you look up here at this man, I'm the reason why he was there. We're all the reason why Christ died. That's the only thing we can take credit for was the people that put him there in the first place. We weren't there holding the swords. We weren't there that nailed him there, but inevitably we are the reason why that Christ died. Christ died for sinners, of which I am most chief, Paul said. You and I today, we're saved. We're saved by the gospel through faith in Christ, but it's by God's grace. It's all, it's because of what all God has done for us and nothing else. And guys, listen, as I told you before, there's a lot of people that don't have that right. There's a lot of people that, that, that they've got things out of order. There's a lot of people that think you have to do something in your own power to be saved or to even stay saved. But it's not, it's not you. You can't do things to get it. You can't work to get it. Isaiah said our works are as filthy rags. Righteousness are as filthy rags. They ain't no good. 
Ain't no good at all. They, they, they don't profit anybody anything. If you're not saved by your works, you're saved by the works that Christ done for you 2,000 years ago before you were ever even conceived. He done it for you. And if you're here today and you're lost, it's all been done. It's all been done. You may come in here into this church wondering, what do I have to do? What kind of hurdle do I have to jump through in order to get to heaven or, or to be saved or whatever? There's no hurdles. There is no obstacles. There is nothing. It's all been took care of at the cross. When Jesus died, he said, it is finished. It's finished. It's done. All the loose ends have already been tied. All the T's have been crossed and I's have been dotted. Everything's been done and prepared for you. All you are called to do, the Bible says, is repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and what? Thou shalt be saved. That's a sure thing. That's not a hope so thing. He didn't say you might be or probably will be. We'll give it two to three days. We'll look and see. No. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It is an instantaneous thing. It is a sure thing. We don't have to hope to go to heaven. Peter said it was a blessed hope. Not a hope so. A blessed hope. And we have that hope through Jesus Christ today. Now, that concludes our sermon for today. If... if uh, uh, Brother Derek and Sister Candace want to come up here and sing us a song of invitation or whoever, that'd be great. But the thing that I want you to understand here today, church, is that we need to get the gospel right to tell others. We need to soak this in and make it known to everybody that we are saved by God's grace through faith in Christ alone. And if you're here today and you're lost, it's the same mechanism for you. You can be saved by God's grace through faith in Christ. And the Bible says He'll save you. He's able to save you to the uttermost. And He's able to keep you. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 that after we have heard the word of truth and believe, we are sealed with the spirit of promise. That's a good deal, ain't it? As we stand.